So as an introduction, I just want to quickly tell you guys a story. I had a rotten potato in my pantry, but the rotten potato had rolled out of the bag and somewhere under the shelves, and it started to stink. You know, I, I, I suspect that it was a rotten potato because it has a distinct smell, a very offish smell. And we searched for this smell. We couldn't find it anywhere. So we are on skeleton cleaning at home because I don't have a helper. We tend to clean here in front, just where everyone can see. And the smell wouldn't disappear. I then had to start cleaning the couches, scrubbing the couches, moving the furniture around to try and get to the stink, but I couldn't find its origins. Eventually, when it was time for spring cleaning, I had to get into this pantry and on my knees, and under there, I found the smell. But this smell drove us so crazy. No amount of aroma, you know, I have oils in the kitchen to try and kill the smell, this rot just kept coming through. Even if I sprayed um, room air freshener, it would just kill it for a little while, and then soon, the smell is back. So this morning, the smell that we're trying to cover with our aroma in, in Corinthians is the smell of sin. I just want to mention three instances where the sin of man reached the nostrils of heaven. So for many of you, I don't know where your picture heaven is or God is, but to me, I see him right up on the sky, right through the stars. Um, it says that the stars are his footstool. So in my mind, he's somewhere way up there, right throughout space. And when a smell reaches his nostrils, it is because of a collective of just unholiness, sin reaching right up there. In Sodom and Gomorrah's time, it was their sin that reached the heavens. It says in Genesis 19 verse 13, for we will destroy the city completely. The stench of the place has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. We all know what happened in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. The other time was in, Moses, was in Noah's days. Genesis 18 verse 21 says, And then the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for... The intentions of man's heart is evil from his youth. Never, never again will I strike down every living creature as I have done before. This time as well, the sin of man as a collective was so bad that it was a stink in the Lord's nose. You know, in Noah's days, it was said that the daughters of man were being with the, the, the sons of God. Um, and people suspect it's the old demigod thing, and man was being praised. It was an absolute mess. And God then used the floods to just wash it all away. When the sin collects up, God moves drastically. The next time that our sin will reach heavens is in these days that we're living in. Revelations 18 to 6 says, Her sins stink to high heavens, God has remembered every evil she has done. Verse 6 says, Give her back what she had given. Double what she's doubled in her works. Double the recipe in the cup she has mixed. So this is about our sin now in the last days. You know that they said these last days would be as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. So we have all that evils of then boiled over into now. And it is a stink that reaches the Lord's nose. We are the fragrance that covers up that stink. Second Corinthians 14 to 16, the Apostle Paul charges Christians to spread the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus Christ wherever we go. We are the aroma of Christ to God amongst those who are being saved. Our knowledge of Christ, what we know of him, the knowledge that we know is that Jesus came to this earth as a man and he was crucified for our sins. 
He also resurrected and that he's coming again. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says, We are the witness of the knowledge that Jesus died to bring to us God forever for our greatest joy. That's a different version on the screen. But coming into God is a gift. You know, we're not saved by our own works, but it's a gift of God. 1 Peter 3 verse 18 speaks about sharing this gift. You see, when we have the knowledge of Christ, it only becomes a testimony when you meet the God of your knowledge. I want to share my testimony because the Word of God says that these testimonies is a sweet aroma. So I grew up in a, in a Christian home. And everything was sin. Lying, stealing, laughing too loud, drinking, smoking. Everything was a sin. I remember one afternoon my mother came home. And she found us listening um, to Channel O. At that time it was, it was a hit. And Tupac was playing. And Tupac's music video, for those of you who know, has a girl dancing in the flames. And my mother came in at this time with these girls are dancing in the flames, what you won't do for love. And she rebuked us. I was so embarrassed. She said, can you not see the fire? The fire of hell is burning in this music video. And all we wanted to do was listen to some Tupac. But my mother rebuked us on everything. And there came a time where I got tired of all this rebuking. And I felt like serving the Lord is a lot of rules. It's a lot of don'ts. And I decided to do things my way. Did it my way. And it ended up in absolute disaster. Everything that I tried in my own strength failed. I then was left with the failure of having to admit that I am a failure. That in my own strength, I can do nothing. This shame, this reality still kept me away from Christ because now I was too embarrassed to go back and say I need you father and without you I can't so it was when he called me back that my knowledge now has become my testimony I now know Jesus in a personal way and it's the testimonies of the individuals that will carry us in these last days it will separate us from those who will be in eternal darkness to those that would experience eternal life with Jesus. The testimony of the saints. While our witness spreads the fragrance of Christ, it's not always the same by the hearers who receive the same. To those who are being saved, it's a lovely perfume. But to those who are perishing, it's a sour stench of eternal death. I want to bring this back to the workplace. You know, in the workplace, we face um, many trials and many tribulations. But I want to ask you this morning, do people in your workplace know that you are saved? Is there a distinct difference between your behavior and theirs? Are you mixing in when it's time for your in functions and we get motherless like everyone else? Can they smell your aroma? Or has it been covered by a stench? You know, in, in my personal journey, the one thing that I've learned is that the biggest, devil, the biggest lie the devil tells us is that our sins are too big to be forgiven. That you've sinned such ugly things and God can't forgive you. And then you set yourself in a prison. You hold yourself captive. This morning, I will encourage you to repent. Let it go. Tell him as soon as it happens and move on. Don't let the devil hold you captive on what you've done. Jesus died for those very sins. Nothing pleases him more than to see his son glorified in the courageous testimonies of those he came to save. Let our life be a sweet aroma for Christ. Share Christ when you are given the opportunity to share him. 
share him gently and righteously. And even when you share him, there are those that will find your sharing and your life a stench. Those who are on their way to eternal death, they'll find you appalling. And it's fine. This morning in closing, I want to I wanna say that our application should be that of the Great Commission. Let's go forth and spread the gospel, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of, G of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is our command. You know, we are in the last days, and soon when all the judgments are released and we are in a happy place with Jesus, it will hurt you to not see your loved ones also there on the other side. It will hurt you to not see a colleague that you had the opportunity to share Jesus with, a school friend. How, how sad it would be for us to sit there as the chosen ones, but the very people that we love didn't make it. Yet, you have the testimony of eternal life. You have the testimony that Jesus saves. You have the testimony that Jesus is coming back and that is alive. May we continue to be a sweet, sweet aroma to those all around us. Confess your sins. Live a righteous life. Become a contagious Christian. Draw others near to you by your conduct, by your aroma. You know, um, I have a joke in the youth. Whenever they ask, how do we have so many um, young men and such a little girls? I always make a joke and I say the milkshake brings the boys to the yard. It's because these girls, they conduct themselves in such a beautiful way. They don't date all of the guys. And the guys keep coming back. Because when they try and they fail, more comes, more comes, more comes. <laughs> and so I teach them, if you give away the flower, if you give away the scent, you lose your price. You lose your worth. You lose your value. For as long as you stay pure and you stay in Jesus' arms and in his hand, he will preserve you. May God bless his word. I'm handing over to Pastor now.